Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to lesson 4.7, Multiply Decimals. Our essential question is, what strategies can you use to place a decimal point in a product? Go ahead and turn in your GoMath book to lesson 4.7, and let's begin. Now, the main strategy that we're going to teach you for this lesson is when you have a question that's written to the decimal point of the tenths place or the hundreds place, we want you to just turn it into as if there were no decimal points involved. Just multiply it like we learned back in fourth grade as 58 times 24. And when you work that out doing the traditional way, you're going to come up with a product of 1,392. Now, if you don't like the traditional way, remember you could always do box method. That's fine too. 58 times 24, and then find your four partial products, add them up, you're still going to get 1,392. But what we're going to teach you is that what you're going to do is you're going to say, I have two spots to the right of my decimal point. Therefore, my product needs to have two places to the right of the decimal point. So let's go ahead and take a look at question two. Remember, our strategy is to turn it into as if they were whole numbers. So this will be like saying 73 times 96. And then we'll go back and place the decimal point where they belong. Just like we learned in fourth grade, you want to start off by multiplying your 6 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18. So we're going to regroup 1, group a 10, drop the 8 ones. 6 times 7 is 42, plus one more is 43 tens. Now, remember we learned the hug and kiss method. You're going to kiss away what you carried and place the placeholder right there. That way you are starting in your tens place because you're starting to multiply with your tens. So we have 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to carry the 2, drop the 7. 9 times 7 is 63, plus 2 more is 65. And if I were to add it all up together, I have 7,008. Now let's go back and say, well, that doesn't make sense because it's just 7 and 3 tenths times 9 and 6 tenths. And if we were to estimate this, 7 and 3 tenths is about 7, and 9 and 6 tenths is about 10. So 10 times 7 is 70. Therefore, we can see our decimal place needs to be two places to the right of the decimal. And do you see how our product makes sense? 70 and 8 hundredths is about what we estimated, about 70. So our product does make sense. So let's go ahead and look at question 4. We're going to go ahead and rewrite it as if it were 295 times 13. Go ahead and set that up right next to your equation. Okay, let's go ahead and start off by multiplying 3 times 5, which will be 15. Carry the 1, drop the 5. Now let's multiply 3 times 9 is 27, plus this 1 is 28. So let's put a 2 up there and an 8 down here. We regrouped our 2 and dropped the 8 down. And now we're going to multiply 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. So our first partial product will be 885. Now let's go ahead and multiply our tens place. So in order to do that, we're going to have to kiss away what we regrouped and drop our hug right down here. And we're going to now multiply. 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 9 is 9, and 1 times 2 is 2. If you add it all up carefully, you can see that we have a total of 3,835. Now let's go back and estimate. 29 and 5 tenths, we could say that's about 30. 1 and 3 tenths, is about 1. I know it's greater than 1, but let's go ahead and just say it's about 1. So our product should be around 30. And if you look right here, 3,835 3, doesn't make sense, but we're two places to the right of the decimal. 38 holes does make sense. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to question 6. Okay, boys and girls, just like our strategy said, rewrite this as if it were whole numbers. So we have as if it were 907 times 65. And we'll go back in and place our decimals when they belong. However, um, let's go ahead and just estimate our product just right away. I would say this is about 9 holes. 
and I would multiply it times about seven because six and a half can round up to seven. So our product should be somewhere around 63. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Five times seven is 35. Let's carry our three, drop our five. Five times zero is zero, but let's add back our three that we regrouped. And five times nine is 45. Do you see how we're just going back to fourth grade math, what we learned last year? Now let's go ahead and kiss away the three and drop our hug down here. Set ourselves up to multiply our tens place. So six tens times seven would be six times seven is 42. So we're gonna have 42. Let's carry the four, regroup it, and drop the two. And now let's go, say six times zero is still zero plus the four we regrouped, we'll put four down here. Now, six times nine is 54. Because nine times six is 54. Now we're gonna put our four there, and let's put our five right here, and now we're gonna add the two up. All right, let's go ahead and add our ones place. Five ones, five tens, nine hundreds, eight in my thousands, and drop down my five in my ten thousands place. But really, those aren't the real place values. We're gonna find the correct place value. I have three spots to the right of the decimal, therefore my product should have my decimal point right there. And look, this would round up to 60, and this would round down to 60. So therefore, my estimate is actually reasonable. So we have 58 and 955 thousandths as the product. All right, let's go ahead for number eight. Let's go ahead and estimate really fast before we begin to solve. I'm gonna call five and six tenths, and let's round that up to six holes, times, and let's call this 60 holes. So six times 60 is 360. Our product should be close to 360 in that ballpark area. All right, now let's go ahead and rewrite our question so that way it is without a decimal point for right now. We'll go back in and add our decimal point later. All right, go ahead and pause the video and work yours out and we'll check and see if our answer is matched. Don't forget to put your decimal point where it belongs. All right, let's see if we matched. You should have started out by saying six times four is 24, six times eight is 48, plus two more is 50. Six times one is six, plus five more is 11. Carry the one, drop the one. And six times six is 36, plus one more is 37. There's your first partial product. Place a zero down as your hug, and kiss away what you already regrouped. And now let's go ahead and multiply the tens place. Five times four is 20. Carry the two, drop the zero. Five times eight is 40, plus two more is 42. Five times one is five, plus four more is nine, and five times six is 30. And now we can add the two partial products together. And when you did yours, you should have had yours looking like this. Now let's count up how our decimal points, we can go ahead and place our decimal points back where they were. And let's see that we have one two spots plus a third. So it needs to go to my thousands place. So our answer is reasonable because 360 is our estimate and this is a number in my 300, so our answer is reasonable. All right, let's take a look at question 11 at the bottom of our page. It says Aretha runs a marathon in three and 25 hundreds hours. Nil takes one and six tenths times as long to run the same marathon. How many hours does it take Nil to run the marathon? So let's go ahead and set up the equation as if there were no decimal points. There's our three and 25 hundredths, but we're not gonna put our decimal point in just yet, and one and six tenths, but we won't put the decimal point in just yet. Go ahead and work this out, pause your video, and work it out, and then we'll check our product together and see if we have the same answer. Don't forget, your decimal needs to go three spots to the right of your decimal point. Okay, go ahead and press pause now. Okay, when you multiplied, you should end up with 5,200, but remember, you have three spaces to the right of your decimal point, so it should go to the thousands place. So you would say that it takes Neil five whole hours and two tenths, or two hundred thousandths of an hour, to run the same marathon. 
All right, let's do the same thing for number 12. It says Tiffany catches a fish that weighs 12 and 3 tenths of a pound. Let's go ahead and find a spot right below that question where we can just turn that into 12 and 3 tenths but without our decimal point. Frank catches a fish that weighs 2 and 5 tenths times as much as Tiffany's fish. So I know Frank's fish is going to be heavier because his is 2 and 5 tenths or 2 and a half times as much. So his will be bigger. How many pounds does Frank's fish weigh? Go ahead and set up your equation without your decimal points. We'll put those in at the very end. And then when you have your product, don't forget you need to have two spots to the right of your decimal point. Let's check it when you press pause. Go ahead and press pause now. All right, boys and girls, when you added yours up together, your two partial products, well, first of all, you should have said 615 is your first partial product, 2,460 is your second, altogether it's 3,075. Now, let's see how many spots we have to the right of our decimal. One, two. So let's go ahead and place that where it belongs. You should have your product to be 30 and 75 hundredths. Now let's go back to our story problem and see if this makes sense. If Tiffany catches a fish that weighs 12 and 3 tenths of a pound, Frank catches a fish that weighs 2 and a half times as much as Tiffany's, how much does his weigh? Well, this answer makes sense then, because 12 pounds I'm estimating is her total. Twice that amount would make hers a, his about 24 pounds, but it's plus another half of it, that amount. So that would be another 6 pounds. So that does make sense. His fish should be about 30 pounds and 75 hundredths. So therefore, this answer works. All right, go ahead and turn your page over to the back side. Your homework questions will be questions one and two, and then also do three through six for review. Um, go ahead and show your work in your book if you have the room. And then don't forget to also assess yourself at the top of this page. At the top of this page, please put one, two, three, or four, depending on what level you feel of where you place your decimal point. And we will check these problems tomorrow in class, and we'll do lots more practice to get really good at this. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye.